A talk show host in the role of a cat? An NBA legend as a dancing gamer? These South Park cameos may have slipped you by, but they feature some of the most legendary names in the entertainment industry. George Clooney has been many things in his long and illustrious Hollywood career, including actor, director, Oscar winner, and two-time Sexiest Man Alive, but he was also one of Trey Parker and Matt Stone's earliest fans. According to Far Out magazine, Clooney enjoyed the duo's 1995 short film The Spirit of Christmas so much that he made hundreds of VHS copies to distribute among his famous pals. As a tip of the cap to Clooney's early support for their careers, Parker and Stone gave Clooney a role in one of their early earliest South Park episodes. Clooney, at the peak of his 90s stardom and fresh off his turn as Batman in the poorly received Batman and Robin, accepted a small part in Season 1, Episode 4. In the episode, Clooney provides the vocals for Sparky, Stan's new dog who his friends believe is gay. It's a very small role, and one which consists of no dialogue, just a series of barks, sniffs, growls, and other related dog noises. It's easy to forget about this early cameo, and even many hardcore fans probably don't know that Sparky was played by one of the biggest names in Hollywood. This wasn't the last collaboration between Clooney and the South Park creators. He returned to voice Dr. Guash in the feature film South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. Son, I have some bad news. We accidentally replaced your heart with a baked potato. You have about three seconds to live. Whoop! Another cameo that features not a single line of actual dialogue comes to us from Season 1, Episode 13, in which Cartman's long-suffering and perpetually hungry cat Mr. Kitty is voiced by comedian and late-night host Jay Leno. The episode was produced several years into Leno's tenure as the host of The Tonight Show on NBC. This vocal performance has Leno showing off his range of meows and hisses as he attempts to win the sympathies and dinner scraps of Eric Cartman. While Mr. Kitty appears in numerous episodes of South Park, Leno is only credited as the voice of the precocious feline on this singular occasion. No, Kitty, this is my corned beef cabbage. No, Kitty, it's a bad kitty! Leno's short tenure as Mr. Kitty wasn't his first collaboration with Stone and Parker, and it wouldn't be his last. Months earlier, The Tonight Show aired an animated segment in which Leno spoke to the class at South Park Elementary. Afterwards, Leno would return to South Park to play himself in Season 2, Episode 7, having Ms. Crabtree on his show to promote her screaming comedy act. With a career spanning seven decades, Henry Winkler is best known for his roles as Arthur Fonzarelli on the 70s sitcom Happy Days and Gene Cousinow on the HBO dark comedy Barry. Thanks to the staggering number of film and television credits to his name, the comedy icon has probably guest starred in something you've seen without you even knowing it. South Park fans probably wouldn't have recognized Winkler's voice in Season 2, Episode 7 unless they stuck around for the credits. In this quasi-clip show, the boys are stuck on a school bus teetering over the edge of a cliff after bus driver Miss Crabtree takes an ill-advised detour up a mountain on a snowy day. When she leaves to get help, she tells the kids not to leave the bus, lest they get gobbled up by the kid-eating monster. Several of the bus's occupants believe it to be a clever ruse designed to keep them from wandering off. But when one brave lad decides to make a run for it, they find out that the monster is all too real, as the disobedient boy is gobbled up by a fearsome black beast. The roaring and chomping and teeth gnashing were all delivered with a plum by the Fonz himself. It's yet another high-profile South Park cameo that features no lines of dialogue. Funnily enough, Winkler's iconic Happy Days character makes an appearance in a reference to the infamous Jumping the Shark episode, but the voice of Fonzie is provided by Parker rather than the man himself. Easily one of the most star-studded episodes in the show's history, Season 2, Episode 14 sees the supporting character Chef sued by Capitalist Records after asserting that Alanis Morissette cribbed her new hit Stinky Britches from a demo he made years earlier. After losing the court case thanks to Johnny Cochran's excellent implementation of the Chewbacca defense, Chef is ordered to pay the label $2 million or wind up in jail for four years. Luckily, Chef has some very famous friends willing and able to put on a massive benefit concert to raise the money he needs to stay out of the slammer. The boys round up all his old buddies, from Ozzy Osbourne to Primus, to play the show. The most notable cameo, though, is by five-time Grammy Award winner Sir Elton John. This fictionalized version of the Crocodile Rock singer owes his lyrical brilliance and flamboyant wardrobe to South Park Elementary's musical lunch server. If it wasn't for Chef, 
I would never have had a career in music. So will you buy some of our candy bars to help him out? Yes, of course. I'll buy three crispy yum-yums. Sir John does more than just buy some snacks. He shows up to support his old friend and even performs an original song that Stan wrote for his girlfriend, Wendy. George Clooney wasn't the only big-name actor to get into South Park in the 1990s. According to the Huffington Post, Jennifer Aniston was also an early adopter, having been introduced to the show by her future husband, Brad Pitt. Aniston, who at the time was five seasons into her star-making performance as Rachel Green on the hugely popular sitcom Friends, got the opportunity to meet the men behind the madness when she lent her voice to the season three premiere episode, Rainforest, Schmainforest. Aniston plays Miss Stevens, the director of a charity choir that recruits elementary-aged boys and girls for a Save the Rainforest concert in Costa Rica. However, due to a series of unforeseen events upon the choir's arrival in the Central American nation, Miss Stevens quickly changes her tune, changing the theme of the concert from Save the Rainforest to Stop the Rainforest. On the Season 3 DVD commentary, the South Park creators revealed that Aniston was very nervous when recording her lines, as she was relatively inexperienced with voiceover work at the time. Once she got over her initial jitters, however, she turned in a truly hilarious performance. I hate the rainforest! You go right ahead and plow down this whole thing! That's swell! Richard Belzer isn't a cop, but he played one on TV for 23 years. Since first appearing on Homicide, Life on the Street in 1993, Belzer played his iconic lawman John Munch on 10 different programs, including Law & Order, The X-Files, and even Arrested Development. That's why it's so funny to see Belzer break bad in the first episode of South Park Season 4. Perhaps in need of a break from investigating New York's most heinous crimes, Belzer decided to return to his comedic roots and flex the old funny bone when he took on the role of Loogie, a Don Corleone type in the body of a fifth grader, Loogie runs a fake tooth fairy racket in central Colorado in an effort to make some extra cash. When the boys start their own version of the scam, they run afoul of Loogie's crew and find themselves the subjects of a missing teeth investigation by the American Dental Association. I want those South Park kids dead! I want their families dead! I want their houses burned to the ground! Oh, hi there, mister! My mommy and daddy are out front if you need them! Counterculture comedians and Mary Jane enthusiasts Cheech Marin and Tommy Chong are no strangers to pushing boundaries. Their debut film, Up in Smoke, was the progenitor of the stoner buddy comedy when it was released in 1978. After parting ways to pursue other projects in the mid-80s, their appearance in South Park Season 4, Episode 6 was something of a creative reunion for the pair. Marin and Chong play a pair of roles reminiscent of their stoner characters of the 70s and 80s. They're two employees at Misinformation's New Age Shop, a holistic healing boondoggle that attracts the patronage of many of the South Park townsfolk. When Kyle finds himself with a kidney infection, he's taken to the New Age Shop, where Carlos and Chief hawk natural remedies that unsurprisingly do very little to repair his renal function. After the town finds out the truth about misinformation and her store, they attack her on the spot and run her employees out of town. Eight-time NBA All-Star and Hall of Fame center Yao Ming is obviously best known for his eight seasons with the Houston Rockets. The 7'6 big man averaged 9.2 rebounds and 19 points per game during his illustrious career. Ming was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in 2016 alongside another famous center with acting credits, Shaquille O'Neal. In 2004, 10 days before the first game of the Western Conference first round series against the Los Angeles Lakers, Yao Ming lent his vocal talents to Parker and Stone for South Park Season 8, Episode 4. In the episode, which sees the boys challenged to a dance competition by a crew from Orange County, Ming provides the voice of Yao, a local Dance Dance Revolution wizard who holds the record on the machine at the local arcade. He refuses to dance without a computer telling him what to do, believing it to be a stupid pastime otherwise. Thankfully, Yao eventually eventually agrees to participate, and South Park wins the competition by default after Butters accidentally crushes the opposing team under a rafter of lights. As one of those actors that you've seen one time in that one thing, Diedrich Bader has over 200 acting credits and is no stranger to comedic voiceover work. You've heard his voice on everything from The Simpsons to Harley Quinn, and you might recognize him as Bill Erickson on Veep, or, more recently, as Tony on Lucky Hank. In Season 9, Episode 5 of South Park, Bader provided the voice for Randy Marsh's Little League trash-talking adversary, known only as Bat Dad. This overweight and over-enthusiastic father of the Denver Little League team's second baseman wears a cowl and cape and frighteningly little else to every game. Come on, Denver! Get the lead out! Do not cross the Bat Dad! 
Jeez, I really wish this guy would shut up. The over-the-top performance culminates in a knockdown, drag-out brawl with Randy at Coors Field during the Colorado Little League Championship. Thanks to encouragement from Stan and his friends, Randy wins the fight, disqualifying South Park from the game and proving that he's truly the best around. When long-standing cast member Isaac Hayes took umbrage with Parker and Stone's depiction of Scientology in the season 9 episode Trapped in the Closet, the character of Chef was written off the show, but it didn't take long for him to return to town. In the season 10 premiere, Chef returns to South Park with vocals cobbled together from old recordings, having traveled the world with the Super Adventure Club. However, something is rotten in the state of Colorado, as the boys realize that their friend has been brainwashed by the nefarious cult of adventurers. At the end of the episode, Chef is struck by lightning and falls seemingly to his death. However, his fellow super adventurers resurrect his body in a Darth Vader-style costume, turning him into Darth Chef. This version of the character is played by British voice acting icon and master impressionist Peter Serafinowicz. Serafinowicz doesn't have much to say in this role, but what few lines he has, he nails. A perfect cross between the deep bass voices of Isaac Hayes and James Earl Jones, this cameo is brief but undoubtedly memorable. Josh Gad had already worked with Parker and Stone when he was cast in South Park Season 21, Episode 5. Six years earlier, Gad was the first person to take on the role of Elder Cunningham in Parker and Stone's hit Broadway musical, The Book of Mormon. Gad was nominated for a Tony Award for his performance, and the show won a total of nine trophies, including Best Musical, at the 2011 awards ceremony. In South Park, Gad plays the role of Marcus Preston, a kid traumatized by the overdose deaths of several costumed birthday party characters. He attempts to uncover the source of the drugs responsible and discovers that a resident of a local nursing home has been hiding illicit substances inside throw pillows and distributing them to the residents of the town. There is an epidemic in our community, sir. Some of us actually can confront the problem. Now, damn it, what did you find? After taking down the elderly kingpin responsible with the help of Stan and his grandfather, Marcus dedicates his life to stopping the opiate crisis on a much larger scale.